Be kind. Rewind. This is Dope Nostalgia. Hey, uh, welcome once again to another episode of The Long and Short of It, where James P. White and I review the Billboard hits top 10 of every year in the 90s. We are now into 1997. Hi, James. How's it going? <laughs> it's great, honestly. So tell me, what were you doing in 97? Huh, I was... I was working for my dad as a plumber. I did that until about 99-ish. Mm -hmm. And I spent a lot of time working with the youth group in my church. Sweet. And in Tabor? Were you in Tabor? Yes, I was in Tabor at that time. Tabor, Alberta, folks. Corn Capital. And uh, 97, I, I was being a young adult, but I was partying a lot. And uh, I just got my first like job that I loved at the Pizza Hut. So I was hanging out with people. I had my first like long-term boyfriend and all of that kind of thing in 97. Yep. And I remember there was starting to be some return of pop music pretty heavily in 97 too. Like 97, 98, 99 was where all the new like Britney and Sync, Backstreet, all that stuff was starting to brew. Oh, yeah. Already. Spice Girls, all of that was starting to come around the corner. Take a trip with us now. We are going to go through those Billboard hits. We got our list, starting with number 10, Speak of the Devil. Brittany? No. From, from England, they oh, were like, they swept, Girls. they swept the world like a total phenomenon. It was insanity. They were Absolutely. only number 10 at this point. Number 10 of the whole year, and this was like their very first single. So they hadn't completed world domination yet. This was just the beginning. I remember this was a huge song. It still gets played, and it still makes people freak out when they hear it. I was actually surprised someone could harmonize in this group. <laughs> But they were fun, and then they each had their own identity, so every girl could identify with their favorites. You know, so highly marketable. There were Spice Girls dolls, of course there were. I mean, I was too old for that. I was like 19, 20 by this time. And South Park had just come out. I was watching that. You can really tell they're not wearing bras in this video. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> was this around the same year that the Spice World movie came out? Or was this was that a couple of years later? That was a couple of years later. That was around the time they had already released their second album, Spice World. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah. Because then that's when like everything was like massively insane. So, yeah, like they were pretty much completed world domination by the time that movie came out but yeah. i mean did they even properly tour north america i don't even know they never came here no i don't know i bet you they went to like toronto though everyone goes there probably toronto vancouver those are the yeah. two major cities that a lot of the big artists went to true and montreal too a lot of them go there but they're the biggest populations Mm hmm. Yeah, the most concentrated amount of people in, in a small space because this country is so spread out so big, right? So it makes sense that population wise, that's where they're going to hit. But now we have the coolest arena in the country. Edmonton, yes, Alberta, do. Rogers Place, brand new arena, only five years old now. <laughs> and it was abandoned for like a year and a half. So, hey, <laughs> just like everything else for COVID. So, number nine. Ooh, let me just start playing this. 
Now, what you might find interesting about this song is that this was done by two country artists, two female country artists Which, at the same time. Was it done at the same time? That's what I was just looking up. Because Trisha Yearwood did it, and that was in the uh, the Con Air soundtrack. Right. And I believe this is also from the Con Air soundtrack, isn't it? Like, which one is which and why? No, no, the Trisha Yearwood one was in the Con Air soundtrack. So why does Leanne Rimes do it, too, at the same time? Are you looking that up? I think Leanne Rimes wrote it. I, I think you're probably already on it, but uh, uh, I'm looking up the wiki on this. Yeah, I'm trying to do the same. This song was written by Diane Warren, one of oh, the yeah. greatest, okay. greatest songwriters of our generation. She's written like some of the ma most massive hits of all time. Um, so. Okay. Uh, Leanne Rhymes let it. Uh, it was it was May twenty third of that year. Both of them were released on the same day. Both versions, Trisha's really? and Leanne's. Yes, Trisha Yearwood's was like you said. It was the one from the movie Con Air with Nicolas Cage. But yeah, they both came out. I wonder which version did better on the. Well, obviously Leanne's did better on the chart, but that's probably because she was more pop orientated compared to Trisha. Leanne Rams had done the whole Coyote Ugly soundtrack, and that was really poppy, right? That was kind of crossover. Yeah. So I'm assuming that's why it did well on the pop chart. Interesting. But yeah, Diane this, uh, Warren. Trish, uh, Trisha Yearwoods is more country. A lot, like it did very kind. She's more pop in this at this time. I want to just hear a little bit of Trisha's version here just to compare because I don't think I've ever played them back to back. Different key too, obviously, different singers, different keys. So it's got a little bit more of a country sound to it. I wonder if she was banging Garth Brooks yet. <laughs> I don't think so. Not at this time. I need you in my arms, need you to hold. You're my world, my heart, my soul. If you well, I think it's going to be more country because I see a fiddle player in the band. Even though the fiddle player isn't playing the fiddle yet, as you can tell. I thought maybe there might be some slide guitar. Yeah, the other one's probably a little poppier, hey? Yeah. Which one do you like better? This one? I know this one better. Hmm. So I Rick, when I hear this song, I think of Trisha Yearwood. I don't think of Leon Rhymes. That's fair. That's a good one. That's a it's a beautiful song. Deserves to be in our top 10. Number eight. <clears throat> We're going to go back to some R&B here. Now, I know we've said it before. You weren't listening to much of that kind of music back then, but I think that you've heard this song since. You probably have. Ooh. He's a British artist, Mark Morrison. Him and uh, Craig David were both British artists that were in R&B that were doing really well at that time. And Montel Jordan too, but he's not. He's American, I think. Okay, I know this one. I do, I do recognize it. But again, it's not my cup of... Oh, there's a snake. Snake warning. 
My anaconda don't want none. The chorus is very simple. I don't like how it went from showing a, a live snake to showing his snake boots. Snake shoes. Like, what are you trying to say there, Mac Morrison? Mark Morrison? What are you doing there? Did you did you just make a fucking are, are those boots? Are those snake or gator? They look more gator. Oh, I don't really know. Maybe they're plastic. But I doubt it. Record company probably bought them nice ones. <laughs> So no, not your jam. You're not gonna get down and strip to that one. No. Okay. I'm excited about number seven. Why? Because I'm going to see them in a week as part of the mixtape tour in California. This number seven is En Vogue. What surprises me though is this isn't one of their songs that was one of their most major hits. I figured one of their more major hits would have been featured already. Something like Free Your Mind or yeah. Never Gonna Get It, My Lovin'. I, I recognize this song. Jada Smith, Jada Pinkett that Smith. That looks like Jada Pinkett Smith, yeah. So this is another movie soundtrack. I think it's just a music video. I don't know. Maybe she wasn't that big in acting back then. I don't think. Our listeners can let us know if this song was from a movie. But we definitely see Jada Pinkett in this. Who's been talked about a lot lately. <laughs> Not always in the positive light. That's definite. Oh. That is an older version. I know him from something, too. Yeah, I think he was in. I think that's Blair Underwood. Yes. I love in Vogue. They were so good. Now, there's originally there were four members. There are three members now, but only two of them are the originals. Terry and Cindy are still in the group in Vogue, and then they have a new girl, Rhonda, who used to be part of the Mickey Mouse Club, and now she's part of in Vogue. So both Maxine and Dawn have left to do their own things. So it'll be interesting to see how their new dynamic is when I see them live. I'm very excited. I'll have already seen the show by the time this comes out. <laughs> anyway. Yes. I like it. After these messages, we'll be right back. Yeah. Dope Nostalgia listeners, I love you and I thank you so much for being a part of this show and its success over the last two years. We have what's called Patreon for those who want to support the show financially. For as little as $1 a month, you can become a subscriber and get bonus content, early podcast release, all kinds of cool behind the scenes stuff, and more. There's different tiers of membership starting at only $1 a month. And we even have some special merch for you guys who are in it for the long run. So please join our Patreon. It's at www.patreon.com forward slash dope nostalgia. Tonight, from wherever in the world you are listening, give a big hand for your host. Hello, I'm Easy Bickley May from Price Tag Pod, and I'm so excited to be a part of the Dope Nostalgia Podcast. 
Price Tag Pod is a new cheesy game show podcast due to release on April 2nd. Price Tag Pod attempts to put a price tag on your dignity, and to do this, the show breaks down into three easy parts. First, we ask our guests 11 uniquely ridiculous questions. £376. Uh, you have edible glitter in all of your drinks for life. Oh, no. who, who would agree to that? No, never. $500, Tim. Oh, $500. For the whole of next year, you have to have a mullet and a mustache. Ooh. Hundred dollars. Would you drink from your best friend's toilet bowl? Oh. Next, we negotiate a price. Hundred and ten pounds. Oh, I think it's definitely worth more. How much you got, pal? Give me Come on. Give me a number. Let's do two hours of your pay then. Let's do twenty-two dollars. Twenty-two oh one. I'll take twenty-two oh one. All right, we'll do twenty-two oh one. You just want a weird number, right? Then at the end of the show, we calculate the total. Three hundred and seventy thousand seven hundred and eighty-four dollars and ninety-five cents. You were worth three hundred and ninety-five thousand seven hundred and seventeen bucks. Nice. That's like almost a two-bedroom condo where I live. And that's it. We have fun. The guests have fun, and we see how cheap or expensive people's self-worth really is. To follow the show, just type price tag pod into your friendly neighborhood Google engine and we'll show up somewhere. Have a great week and we'll see you on the show. Enjoy extra sugar-free gum. You get extra flavor, extra fun, in extra sugar-free gum. The long-lasting sugar-free gum is extra with NutraSweet for extra refreshing flavor that lasts an extra, extra, extra long time. Extra flavor for that extra long flight. Extra flavor for that extra long night. When you're chewing extra, the extra fresh flavor lasts an extra, extra, extra long time. Extra lasts extra long. All right. Halfway through, we are now at number five. But a big time rap artist. Puff Daddy. Which Did one he go it? by Puff Daddy then? Because he went by P. Diddy and then he went by Diddy and then he's like the D. I don't know. He's, he's... <laughs> I don't even know all of his names. Because he went he went by Puff Daddy and then he was P. Diddy. P. Diddy. And, then, and then I think he was just Diddy. Just Diddy. Um, oh, this is going to be featuring Mace, of course. Ooh, it's got a big theatrical beginning to this video. Somebody's having a bad dream. P. Diddy is having a bad dream of being of being drowning in the water. Bad boy, baby. I don't recognize this lady. Had to oh. I bet Mace is calling. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's B.I.G. Yo. Oh, damn. I clipped that. Clip that. What's up, Playboy? <laughs> Could you reach in your glove box there and give me registration? What's that guy's an now? actor. Uh, yes. Uh, What's up, okay. Puff? Yeah, Hold on. Okay, now. What's These up, two guys is that ludicrous? No. 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 He's, He's an actor. actor. This one. No, hell no, they ain't uh, touching. They trying to mess with me. <laughs> Okay. Eddie Griffin. That's Eddie Griffin. Tell me what time we gonna link up, man. We should be over here in a minute. Around 12 o'clock. Why? Why are you in the car? Is this the first yeah. Puff Daddy song? Because Biggie's still around. Put it out. All the stores bet you can shop that. Leave a nail with a hot hat. Frontin' like bad boy ain't got trash. Stop that. There's no guy slicker than this young fly mister. Nickel nine liquor. If I look, if I look back at those days, I'm trying to remember if. Puff Daddy and Mace did everything together because it felt like it. And they did every music video with a fisheye lens down a hall. It was like, it looked like they were in the inside of a cheese grater. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, but I think that's because the, the producer of a lot of those videos, his name was Hype Williams, and he did a lot of that kind of style. It was pretty sweet. So, P. Puff Diddy. Can't nobody hold me down. Number five. Number four, we are going back to another hit maker who's been on our charts multiple times. That's just how it is. She was a big deal. A big deal. Tony Braxton again. I think you know this one. This is probably her, I, I think her biggest hit. Woo! 
Ooh, Tyrese is in this. Tyrese is the, the guy on the motorbike. Oh, no. No, he's in an accident. Well, that was a beautiful flip. Is he not breathing? For some reason, I thought Unbreak My Heart was way earlier in her career. But no, it was later. I love how deep her voice goes. Her makeup is flawless. She's got that 90s lip liner on where women used to like line the shit out of the outside of their lips with a dark color and fill it in with a lighter one. Yeah. Yeah, we did that. So yeah. I always pay attention to the style of how women do their makeup. <laughs> it's a big deal, man. I have no idea how you do that stuff. You can watch some YouTube tutorials. Yeah. The only thing I do for try. makeup is just face paint. For wrestling. Yes. And other activities. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Other random activities. Just random. Tony Braxton once again charting, always killing it. We've got number three coming up is a song you totally know. It's still another, being played ridiculously another, lots. Another P Diddy. Was he still Puff then? Like, uh... yes, he was still Puff Daddy then. Because honestly, his career got bigger. I feel like. But he was Around also in time. some movies and TV, too. He had some appearances. This song and another song on the chart coming up were to deal with people who are lost, who had passed away. What, what TV shows and stuff was he doing? Uh, he did. He was in uh, the Hawaii Five O, like in the 2000s. Um, hmm. He was, uh, oh, what was the other one? I can't remember, but I remember him from a couple of Hawaii Five O. Okay. This song features two older hits, not just one. Uh, the one that's obviously apparent is the police, right? Yeah. Every breath you take. Um, I know you're still living your life. The bridge of this song, I'll get to that. Um, it's it takes the a song that was a hymn a hymn from 1929 called "I'll Fly Away." It's something you might have heard before. Let me show you. Right here. Yeah, this is a gospel tune. Yep. It's called I'll Fly Away. Ooh, and also this song featured Faith Evans, who was singing that part and the, all the late women part there, and the R&B group 112, who's this right here. So yes, he's, he wrote this and, and put it out right after the passing of Notorious B.I.G. And it became a huge, massive hit for Puff Daddy. Bad Boy Entertainment kind of blew up from there. It was big. What was his, what's his real first name or real name? Sean Combs. Yeah, he was, because that's what I was trying to figure out. He was uh, under his actor name, which is the Sean Combs and some of the stuff. He had... So I just got a list of it. Uh, uh, Puff Daddy, P Diddy, Diddy, Puffy, and then Sean Combs. <laughs> Does he just go by Sean Combs now? Maybe not in the music industry, but I think like if he's making appearances in, in TV and stuff, he probably, because I've seen it under Sean a couple of times. Okay. I'm very confused by number two. 
the reason being it's two songs by the same artist and it's called you are meant for me slash foolish games jewel so i'm wondering if they tied which doesn't make sense because they're two completely separate songs And so I just looked up a little bit more and just to make sure I wasn't being fooled by my eyes. And, but no, Jewel, number two, you were meant for me slash foolish games. Was it one of those songs that were played like back to back um, on the radio? Like, like they do with uh, Queen, uh, we are the champions and we will rock you. I'm kind of wondering. Was it one of those? There's a few songs that they've done that way. Like there's that one. And then uh, there's a Guns N' Roses that did one that way. Okay. I'm going to, you're right. Um, There definitely was. This is on the wiki for Foolish Games. A CD single for the song was not issued in the U.S. However, a re-released version of the You Were Meant For Me CD single had a hidden bonus track of the single of Foolish Games. Because of this, instead of debuting and charting on the Billboard Hot 100 in the traditional way, Foolish Games was able to continue the chart life of You Were Meant For Me. The latter, which had peaked at number two, was spending its 41st week on the chart, rebounded to number 12 as Foolish Games slash You Were Meant For Me eventually peaking at number seven, eight weeks later. As a result, Billboard listed Foolish Games as peaking at number two, despite the song never actually reaching that position. Foolish Games, You Were Meant For Me, was listed as the second best performing song of 1997 by Billboard. That is weird. Yeah. Because it wasn't on the album, they piggybacked it. Hmm. So they stuck it on the CD single, therefore it becoming the this, this single. I've never heard of anything like that happening before. No. I wonder if it has. <laughs> Let us know, folks, if it has, because that's weird stuff. Okay, we've hit number one once again. This one does not surprise me at all. 1997 was the year that Princess Diana passed away. Oh, yeah, this is a given. And uh, so they made Elton John sing, singing at her funeral, rewrote the song that he originally had written for Princess or for Marilyn Monroe, Candle yeah. in the Wind. And he rewrote it um, for The Lost of Diana, Candle in the Wind 97. Where instead of saying goodbye, Norma Jean, he says goodbye, English Rose. And he presents, so he performs it at her funeral and it goes back up to the charts again to be the number one song of the whole entire Elton year. Elton John on the right there. Elton John, who will be singing with his partner, David Furnish, beside him. Oh, Elton and George John, Michael. Who, the princess at the funeral of Versace was comforting and George Michael, the singer on the right, with the beard. Elton John, who's rewritten his famous song, Candle in the Wind, that was written for Marilyn Monroe for today and was here yesterday afternoon practicing in the Abbey. And a world away from the life of those people, those distinguished people who've come here in the Abbey at Horse Guards. Now in the nave, Elton John sings Candle in the Wind with new words specially written a few days ago by Bernie Taupin. Goodbye, England's Rose. May you well grow in our hearts. You are the grace that plays to serves. Where lives were torn apart. Wow. Called out to our country. And you whispered to those in pain. Now you belong to heaven. And the stars spell out your name. Can you believe it's been tw- this year? It'll be 25 years and since we lost Princess Diana. You oh, lived wow. your life 
like a candle in the wind Never fading with the sunset When the rain set in So where were you when you heard Princess Diana died? I don't know. Probably was at work. It happened at like, well, because it happened in Paris, right? Um, in the evening. But I remember us hearing about it in the evening. It was my boyfriend at the time's birthday party. It was his 20th birthday. And we were all having a party. And we turned on the TV. And that was everywhere. And it kind of just put like a damper on everything. Yeah. Because we were just stuck to watching this. So that's where I was. <laughs> yeah, I I honestly have no idea. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think now the current generation is learning a lot more about Diana because of the fact like the, the TV series, The Crown has come out. Um, Kristen Stewart has just done a movie about where she plays Diana as well. It highlights a sign just one significant event in Diana's life. Yeah. She, um. And yeah, I think just through the legacy of her children, her boys there, Harry and uh, William, that a lot of people learn about Diana that way. I've always been so like upset that she could have never met her grandchildren and stuff. I always thought that was so sad. Yeah. But things happen to people. But yeah, that was that was a real huge momentous occasion in, in history and in royal history and there you go. Elton John, number one song of the year, 1997. So That's crazy, man. I remember a lot of strange details. <laughs> I'm, I'm the different strange details. I could tell you the, the song where it's played in what movie and at what point, mm -hmm. but current events at the time, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. No, no, it's, I was pretty, as a child, I was very immersed in pop culture though. And that's kind of stuck with me. Hence why I do a podcast like this. Um, so I think that's probably why I remember so many of these things. But when you look at this top 10, I'm going to pull it over here so you can take a little peek. There's so what is many, your favorite? There, oh, there's so many. This one's hard. This one I like better than the one before 96. I like this one more. I think there's more monumental songs in this one. Hey, I skipped one. Yeah. Oh, I skipped one. <laughs> and I don't feel bad about it. Why? I, uh, uh, yeah. I, don't, I didn't just, even notice. Number six. I, I do. I do notice now, but I. I don't even feel bad about it. No. I'll, we'll just tell the people what it was. It was R. Kelly, I Believe I Can Fly, which was a big song. Because that was on this. Uh, again, it's me. Um, was it, Space Jam. Was that the year Space Jam came out too? 97? Uh, that's, I think it was. I can't believe I just went right past it. <laughs> I wonder if it was been removed. Like, I wonder if all R. Kelly things have been like, take it away you know what i'm saying also yeah, i'm gonna like, double check because i was originally looking at a different space jam chart. came out in 96 so it makes sense that this would be charted in in 97 okay because it so was look, probably made really popular yeah it totally makes sense that that song is on here but um r kelly can fuck himself so we don't need to play his song and we look at the top 10 and i'm gonna go with my favorite being <sighs> actually probably don't let go by en vogue i just love that song i'm stuck <laughs> you can tie them that's fine we tied before I'd have to go. Have I'd have to go with uh, "Wannabe" Spice Girls. Yeah, because they're still my guilty pleasure. 
<laughs> Ain't nothing to feel guilty about, my friend. But but I was tied with the how do I live, but not Leanne Rhymes version. Mm. Fair. That's what that's what changed it for you. Yeah. That's fair. Well, we we did it again. We did. 1997 in the books. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> this is totally different when we're sober. Hey, kids, put down that Tamagotchi and listen for a second. You know, you can follow us on Twitter at Nostalgia Dope, Instagram at Dope underscore Nostalgia. Visit our website at www.nostalgia.com or pick up the phone and call us at 780-851-8785. This podcast is licensed by SoCan because we believe that artists should be paid for their work.